the Greenland ice sheet is really of particular importance. If you melt tomorrow, the seas will be seven meters higher, which is enormous. Um, we are now dealing with centimeters and it's already a problem. If a small part of Greenland melts, it's really impactful. So for example, 10% of the Greenland ice sheet is 70 centimeters, which is more than two feet. This is the kind of globally average sea level rise we'd be talking about with only 10% loss of the Greenland ice sheet. In addition to the immediate concern of adding to global sea level rise, there is concern about the impact that Greenland melting has on the circulation pattern in the Atlantic that could tip over the Gulf Stream system. And if that system gets interrupted and less heat gets carried towards the North Atlantic, that could have devastating effects um, for the general climate in the North Atlantic and ripple effects across the entire world. We have research on the table that basically unequivocally shows that the Greenland ice sheet has been gone basically completely during relatively recent um, geological past, during natural climate forcing. Since then we know it's not stable. When we saw the data, it was the first data set that gave me sleepless nights. The Green Drill mission overall, scientifically, is drilling through kilometers of ice, retrieving bedrock samples from underneath the ice. And these bedrock samples, we know that, contain the information about when was the ice sheet the last time smaller. And by knowing that, it will tell us this particular spot, how vulnerable is this element of the Greenland ice sheet to ongoing and future warming. This project has come out of basically 20 years of work in my lab, in the Cosmogenic Nuclide Lab here at Columbia that was necessary to get the technique to a degree that we can actually read this information out of the bedrock underneath the ice. We use a tool called cosmogenic exposure dating and the way this works is that there are cosmic rays coming in from outer space at all times um, and when they interact with rocks at the Earth's surface they create these rare nuclides that we don't otherwise find on Earth. So we can come along and take a rock sample and measure the concentration of these nuclides and use it as kind of a clock to understand how long the rock has been exposed to the atmosphere. And in our group, what we do is apply this method to understand how ice sheets have fluctuated across landscapes on uh, glacial to interglacial timescales. So as we are pushing Green Drill forward to try to access the bed of the ice sheet and suck out what information it has for us, about past ice sheet history. It has the ability to inform the ice sheet modelers. It has the ability to inform the people who are working on the nitty gritty of how ice sheets work. So we think that this information from below the ice sheet has the ability to address or inform lots of different branches of science moving forward to try to understand this global issue of, of ice sheet melt and sea level rise. I think one of the the most exciting elements of the Green Drill project actually is the outreach and education components. We have put together an internship program for high school students. We've run internship programs here in the past for high school students, but not on the polar topics. Really, the whole topic of polar is so uh, kind of broad, engaging, and dynamic for young people. And so being able to bring a polar perspective to science is uh, its unique. It's just really exciting. We need to build science literacy and uh, climate literacy for everyone. And we can't do that unless we can reach them and provide some basic information to them. So that's the role of education, in my opinion. It's about really building this literacy that is kind of missing in a lot of um, what we're seeing and, and hearing today. So really helping them understand science has the answer to problems. It's how we can tackle some of these big problems. What is exciting about this project to me personally is how intuitive it is. I think of ice, of melting ice, as one of the most powerful images of global climate change. And this is particularly true for Greenland. We have to be realistic and we have to face the fact that a significant amount of sea level rise we already have to commit it to. It's still very valuable to provide the facts, the factual baseline 
for policy makers and the broader society to plan ahead. And I hope that this project will contribute to that. If there's anything that I can leave with, it's the idea that we need to focus solutions. We can't just focus on problems. We really need to get to that next level and deal with solutions. And I think Green Drill is the answer for that.